Man, it feels good to be back. Feels good to be back. For I'm so happy to be back, boys. I'm happy you guys are happy to be back. Ken, are you happy to be back? I'm great. I'm. I'm fuck. Whoa! <laughs> He's, He's grand. grand. I am. I am so happy to be back. Thank God. So, so what do we got here? Cheddar in the hot seat. Yeah, cheddar's in yeah. the hot seat. Are you sure you want to miss out on this episode, Ken? Uh, I've got about 400 sweatshirts to hold and send out. All right, Ken, you got a valid point there, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you too long. But we we did tear Ken away from his. Humble abode, the merch area. You bet your ass is not happy about it either. You did turn it on when the camera went. That's why I, it was good though, Ken. You sparked up. You sparked up. So I am in the hot seat then? Yeah, Ben. I, if you didn't know. No, I knew. I was just trying to mentally prepare myself for this. It's hard to. There's nothing re- you can really do. Just come in with an open heart and an open mind. <laughs> That's the plan, but I'm on a scale of 1 to 10, how, how much are you guys going to go in on me? Seven. Not honestly. really at all. Okay. We don't really yeah. go in on at you. At most. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. I, yeah, that I makes me know. feel it's a lot better, pretty, actually. Honestly, it's kind of tough to go in on you. Oh. I mean, without being just mean. I mean, I wouldn't say so. And it's like, can I stick around, actually, for the rest of this podcast? <laughs> I'm sure Ken has plenty of things to say. Before we let Ken go, we had a great weekend this weekend. We we had a very successful meetup. Thousands of people came. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, that was, that was a movie, came. dude. Like, that was crazy. Dude, dude, when I was crowd surfing and when we got Ken crowd surfing, that was one of those things where it's like you always see people doing it and you dream of that. Like, man, it'd be so cool to just get in a position to be able to have that opportunity. And to be able to do it, bro, it felt as good as you would have thought. Ken, well, I, I was terrified. Yeah, Ken, <laughs> Ken I was going to say, you, you really took advantage. Or maybe you didn't take advantage. You were more so forcefully thrown into it, but... I, at that point, I don't think there was a choice. Yeah, the whole crowd. Two. There was, there was. I don't know how many. Thank people, you for inciting that. Yeah, that was lit. I don't know if I incited that. One of you I four did. incited no, it, was, it. It was solely on well, me. It was they solely on me. You quick. Can, the whole crowd was big. Cut, yeah. Big cut, how do you say big no to that? Cut, I mean, you don't. I, it's it's literally impossible to yeah. say no. Yeah. To that. What do you do? Why yeah. did you not love it? No, I was terrified the entire time. So oh. you're telling me, Ken, oh. we could get you to do just about anything as long as we just have a crowd of like 500 people. Yeah. Yeah. Just behind us. Shouting, big cut, big cut. I mean, anything is a broad term yeah. at that point. But I was like, how do you say no at we that like, point? We'll, we'll, we'll roll the clip over, but like they, they were, there was no way you were getting away, get out of that. Absolutely. There's, There's no, no, no chance I could get away without doing it. So it's called peer pressure. But my favorite part was when, you know, crowd surfing, part of crowd surfing is jumping. It's it's like looking into the crowd going like, yes, I'm, I'm going. Honestly, that was the but, most terrifying part is like. But you do had you like a fall? trust fall. Yeah, you know, you almost like laid down like you're laying like on a bed of roses. Because <laughs> I didn't want to like just lay, like, fall somebody. back and then just <laughs> fall Crush straight somebody. to the ground. Dude, I, was, I was down there to catch you, bud. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hey, was, hey, Ben. I was, I'm going to call Cap on that one. But. Dude, I he swear. Was in the you got to stop saying Cap. He was. I was there, dude. I felt your juicy ass on my. I was. Oh I, I was holding you up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I for, I did have your back in that though, Ken, because I was like, "Do not drop him. Do not drop him. Like, make sure you get together." Like I was, and he did get dropped yeah, on your back. On, no, I, 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 I landed you. on my legs. So they let him good. down. Yeah, oh, it, was, it was all. It was all good. You'll hear it in the clip, but Ryan just goes, "Be careful. He's a hero. Be careful. He's a hero." <laughs> Oh, you said that? Yeah. Well, I, I tried when I was editing it. I tried zooming in on Ryan's face in the background from a from a crowd view because you could just see Ryan going. Oh, I, what I was, was that? What me. was that facial reaction, dude? Like, were you nervous or were you like, excited? Like, I, I sat there and stared at it and I was like, I can't tell what Ryan's vibe is on this. I was nervous. I thought they were going to drop Ken. Like, genuinely you were nervous? Concerned. I was, too. I didn't want him to get hurt. Oh, okay. I was so pumped. <laughs> well, that, Ken... That was my favorite part about the whole weekend. Not going to lie. So, big ups to you, Ken. Yeah, dude. You've crowd surfed, and I haven't. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't do it. I Honestly, don't, I was, I was be, slightly don't be jealous. worried. I was slightly worried that they were going to drop. It was about the bare minimum amount of people that you could possibly have to crowd surf. Yeah. yeah. And it was everyone in between... The ages of ten years old and to seven. sixty-five, yeah. and like, like there was women. like yeah, yeah, it was it wasn't like the, a strong-looking crowd. It's a Some strange assortment of people to crowd surf on. That's yeah. for sure. It was interesting. Yeah. It was a good good time. I though. didn't go into the weekend expecting that would happen. It was crazy, dude. We stood in line for ten hours straight and took pictures for all ten hours. We probably took over like a thousand pictures. It was the, more than ten hours. It was like eleven or 12. eleven or twelve. It was crazy. The merch booth was popping. And I think we successfully had the most people in our booth. 
out of anyone else at Heydays, probably. No, I mean, yeah. Obviously. By two times, mm-hmm. like I'd imagine. Second year in a row, we've done that. And it's not, and it was crazy. It's not like, oh, we're doing a signing and then you get like a million people at your booth. No, it was just all day. Yeah. The whole day, morning till night. So that was pretty cool to see. We gave away, uh, as everyone was crowded around the truck when they went uh, crowd surfing, we gave away the pit bike. He unfortunately wasn't there, but he was close by. Everyone was yelling for a redraw, which would have been pretty mean to him. But yeah, he ended up coming and that was pretty cool. Moments like that, when the booth is popping how it was, people in the industry, they can't help but just stand back and respect what is. And it's like, dude, we totally came in and just like disrupted disrupted the market. No brand like that in the industry, I think, has ever done what we did and what we're doing. And it's starting to gain some traction and some respect, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. cool to see, especially when we're like out and about at like the after parties and people are co- like the big dogs are coming up to us and they're like, hey, that was that was crazy. That was yeah, really cool. That does feel good. That feels really cool. So thanks to everybody who came. I understand everyone can't make it because it's in Minnesota, but it was lit. So that was a good, good time. Uh, moving on, Ben, how's that seat feeling? Pretty hot? Feeling pretty hot. Can can I let you get back to your merch holder? You got the warmers oh, yeah. going on that thing yet? Oh, Ken, that you was look comfortable. That, so you that was you stay? that was all we had Ken here for. Well, I oh, want to talk oh, about his crowd serving. Okay, so we weren't gonna just completely roast and toast me, and Ken was gonna be like, "Oh, oh I've been waiting for this moment my entire well, life." Well, I'd like I, to. I kind of want to stick around a little bit now. <laughs> Do you want to? I'm down. I'll stick around for a couple okay, minutes. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm like, we just unorthodox. Well, okay, mean, Ken, get all your roasts out right now since you got to get back. It's not I, be- I, I got I to gotta get them thought out now. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to think about that yet. It's pretty tough. I mean, well, we were planning on probably going in. A, Ken, do you have anything you want to say about Ben's hot seat? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? I thought you had <laughs> questions, it. bro. Like, you uh, were like, oh, no, I, I've had two minutes to prepare for aren't this. Aren't you guys, like, best friends? I would consider us, but Ken wouldn't. I mean, d- depends on the day. Ken, ben considers you guys best friends. Ken considers you guys enemies. Depends what he's done that day, I guess. Isn't it? Isn't it weird how you know just the duo? We got the oldest, largest C boy, and we got the youngest, smallest C boy. You guys are like Tom and Jerry, kind of. You see, the the thing that really gets on me, it's like when you two get together and you just go full blown troll mode. Well, everyone, no one's safe at like, that point though, Ken. Like when you're you're telling you're calling me up on what day was that? Tuesday, Wednesday, Ben starts yelling on FaceTime. What does this have anything to do with me? I'm just, I'm just throwing out an example. Okay. And and I, you well, start, I, we're on FaceTime, and then you just put it on mute and just start talking there. Oh, that was actually pretty funny. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> that what? was pretty funny. I was like, what the fuck? Ken FaceTime me, and I would just, I was talking, and then I would just mute it, but keep talking, and Ken would just go, "Your mic, I think you muted me. You're on mute. I think you, hello, I think you muted me." <laughs> Uh, yeah, those good times. All right. Good luck, man. Get out of here, Ken. Get out of here. Thanks, bro. We'll be seeing you. Thanks, man. Introducing Ben's right hand man, Ryan. Hey, Ryan, Iwerks. why don't you take a seat, man? So, Benjamin, it's your hot seat episode. Yeah. I, I suppose we might as well just get right into it. Give the people what they want. You know, in all honesty, going into this podcast, I was I was actually pretty excited because usually before you know we sit down and we come up with conversation topics and you know this is the structure of it. This is how we want it to flow. Um, but this one, I get to just show up yeah. and talk about myself. Nice. Mm-hmm. It is kind of nice. You do love talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways. Uh, so yeah, this is your hot seat episode. Why don't you tell us a little bit about just like your, your early years growing up just to get us started? Like how early? I mean, birth. <laughs> <laughs> what was I want to like? hear what your was the first, first memory <laughs> and then just go from there. <laughs> uh, some of my earliest memories was uh, you know how when you start doing stuff when you're like a when you're like a little kid but then it seems like nothing really seems like that that crucial in the development of like your childhood until you like find that that thing that's like oh shit I found something I actually really enjoy I think back to my childhood being some of my like fondest memories were uh when when I like first got into dirt biking honestly and uh so at the time we lived in Fargo, which was like a, a city that's like 45, 50 minutes from here. And I, I had like a group of friends, but I always felt like, you know, it's easy to like look back at it now and be like, oh yeah, it makes sense. But I always felt like I, I didn't belong in like a city like that. And I could never really put my f- 
finger on like why, but I always enjoyed coming out to the lake and doing things around the lake. And it was right around that time um, that I got into dirt biking. And that's when like my childhood started to go from like living in a city to the only things I cared about was like the small town living of like the dirt bikes on the weekends, uh, going out in the boat, learning how to like surf and ski and, and like all the things that now consist of like our life. Right. And everything that we do for, like, our jobs. Like, I think back to growing up, finding, like, a passion in that at, like, a very young age and knowing, like, this is my thing. Yeah. The the very first day uh, I got a dirt bike, I literally hated it, dude. <laughs> it just sucks because I was way too small for it. It was a TTR 90. Can you hit us with the line? My name is Ben Roth, and I ride a TTR90. So that was your first bike. So was, that even that was too big for you, you're saying? It was too big because okay. I was always small growing up. and uh, But your dad took you to, like, yeah, so, Ely. Yeah, yeah. So, you got so we, like, got dirt bikes, and, and uh, I always wanted to to start riding a bike because my older cousin, CJ, this douche canoe, <laughs> and my brother uh, had had – dirt bikes and they got to go out to our grandpa's farm and and uh ride and i was like always too young so finally i my parents surprised me with a bike and uh we went up north in minnesota and i learned how to ride it It, like the first day was like the worst day of my life like when i think back to like (laughs) days that i remember like oh my god i just want this day to be over with that's probably top five Wow, you've had a pretty good life. <laughs> <laughs> I saw super privileged saying that. Um, but yeah, it was just like way too small. I couldn't pick it up by myself. Yeah, you kept tipping over it on kept yourself. Tipping and, over. I mean, you, you got kind of brought to a spot where it was a little bit more difficult riding for a, a kid that's on his first first time riding a dirt bike. Uh, but then after that, got a little bit easier, started to enjoy it a little bit more. And then, you know, once you get the hang of it, then you start to enjoy things a little bit more. And then once I did get the hang of it, I was just, like, hooked. Like, the only thing I cared about for, like, the next five years of my life, probably actually the next, like, (laughs) 15, to be realistic. But, uh, yeah, for, like, the next five years, dude. It was just dirt biking. Dirt biking and snowmobiling. Yeah. All I cared about. Yeah, you've always been into, like, the motorsports. Yeah. So before you were into dirt biking, you know... We were we really weren't that close until my my parents bought the place down at the lake, and and we lived right you know a few doors down from yeah, each other. Yeah. Um. But I remember I wasn't like I didn't think much about you. I wasn't like I like Ben. He's a cool guy. I I, I remember you guys were into like taekwondo or something, <laughs> karate. I mean, I never was. I think you were Ben. Maybe a short stint. Well, listen. So I don't. I mean, my earliest memories of you. Is going over to your guys' house in Fargo. I'd be like, oh, here, here we go. And then I show up. Because there's three of you and one of me. So like, we show up. And, like, for some reason, I'd always end up downstairs. And you had, like, a like a kicking bag or something. I don't fucking know. Yeah. You know? Yep. And, and all, you guys would be in your Taekwondo shit. And there I am. And you guys are, like, kicking the thing. You're like, come on, like. You kick it. And then I remember I you. I remember this, bro. You kicked me in the fucking ribs. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just a kid, but you're just Actually, like a, yeah, you're oh, like I a don't remember short that. asshole. Like, I'm not even ready for it. You just go, like, come just, just like straight face. And I was like, all right. Yeah, I don't know about that Ben guy. Yeah, so and at that uh, point, you were you were just cousins, not friends. Yeah, exactly. You know? It was like, I'm yeah, going exactly. over to my cousin's but house. But the turning yeah. point was when my parents, uh, we they drove us down here to look at, you know, houses and... They, they were doing something with your parents, and, and it was just me and you. And on the way down, I was looking at all the ditches because they were mowed, and I, it was, like, at a downhill slope, and I was like, man, if I had my bike here, I would, like, totally, like, ride down that and, like, try to jump the approach. Yeah. Well, anyways, as soon as we pull up, I'm kind of standing around, and you're like, hey, you want to ride bike? And that's literally the first thing we did. Like, you just immediately went and did that with me without us even, like, communicating it, and I was like, that was pretty fun. You know, this guy's all right. <laughs> This guy's all right. And then we just kind of became friends ever since then. Yeah, I remember that day, dude. It was, like, raining out yeah. and shit. Yeah. We were just pedaling, yeah. like, getting no air. And we did like that for a bikes. while, bro. We would just terrorize the neighborhood on our pedal bikes. It was, yeah, and it was, then it developed into dirt bikes. It was good And time, then cars. Dude. But but you, yeah, you were always into, like, you know, obviously we both were. We were just super into dirt bikes. Anything with a motor, really. We yeah. love that. But also just bikes. We'd ride scooters. Yeah. Pretty much anything. Um, but I remember, you know, the years went on 
And uh, you always had to like kind of come up with the money to pay for like if you wanted a new bike that was bigger, you had to you had to pay for it yourself. Yeah. So you you've had a job since I, I mean I'm pretty sure you had a job when it was illegal for you to be for working. Sure. I was 13 <laughs> years old. Yeah. The yeah. the uh, the reason I got my first job was me and my friend Sam were on his dad's four wheelers, like the big Overland um, Can Am four wheelers, heavy fuckers, right? I was turning around doing a shitty or something. I flipped it, and like you could have died. I could have, dude. I For luckily, a little kid. I luckily just got thrown off, and uh, the thing was like upside down, and I was like, oh shit, dude. you know. It always feels worse when you break I, somebody I else's stuff, yeah. right? And uh, we flip it back, and the the uh, back was cracked. And I was like, I don't have any money. Like, I don't. I'm 13 it was years like 500 old. Bucks or something, yeah, it was I like remember. 500 bucks, which and seemed like a that's million. A, back oh, then. That yeah. takes a while to make. Exactly, especially back then. Yep. The minimum wage was like seven bucks. Yep. So we figure out, you know, the the plastics to fix it were 550 bucks or something like that. And I maybe had like 200 dollars to my name. Well, I had to get a job. So I went to the Cormorant <laughs> store, the C store that we go to all the time. That was my very first job. And I have no idea why they gave me a job. Like, I don't know who was running that at the at the time, but Richard. I think there was a couple of us, like 13-year-olds in there. Maybe it, was it was cheap like, labor. Yeah, cheap labor. They didn't ask. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was the first job I had. That was my first time ever seeing you. I, I rolled into the Cormorant store. I just started working down the road, and I, like, had to pick some stuff up. And I saw you, and you kind of were like, oh, what's up, man? Because you recognize me, and I, I yeah. don't know. Anyway, I'm like, yeah. man, that kid had to have been, like, 11. <laughs> that's, <laughs> and that's the thing is, is when I was 13, I looked probably 11. You were just I, If not younger. Like, I was, I was small. I didn't hit puberty until I was 21, you know? You were really, really small, though. Like, yeah, I was a small were guy. Were you the littlest in your class, or was there anyone smaller than you? Uh, You'd remember this, because I'm was. sure it really hit home yeah. for you. Guess who was the smallest person in our class, and then it was probably me. Who? Jonas. Jonas, uh, our, fr- they, they our friend. Our, yeah. You guys don't know Jonas, but we know Jonas. You're just two small friend. guys. Just but two now little guys. Now you're normal size guys. I am, but still, <laughs> but people still come up. People still treat me. They think like I'm like small. five one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. Every it's just like the weirdest times too. Like we were doing like a photo <laughs> shoot for Justin's wedding a couple weeks ago, and the the photographer was like, "Hey, the little guy." Get out of the back. We can't see you. <laughs> and I'm like, Literally bro, I'm 5'11". Are you talking 11. about me? Like, same I'm like the same height else. as everyone else here. You were really small back then, though. I, I remember thinking you were just always going to be small for your whole life. Is 5'9 that That's big, average. Though, no, I'd I think say that's I'm like average. average at best. Yeah. If you went to China, you'd definitely be one of the taller. <laughs> I, I'd be a monster in China. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Speaking you, of... Uh, you being small and hitting puberty at 21, which I want to say you hit it a little before that. I don't know if you if you finished it yet. Yeah, though. so it was just like... Well, hopefully, I'm still going through it, honestly, so you know? Everyone on the channel that's watched us for a while knows that Ben has a squeaking problem. And then the, six months it, ago... It comes in waves. Yeah, five yeah. months ago, it was so bad, dude. I'm like, honestly, I think, he's gonna, yeah, I think he's going to squeak like the rest of his life. And then in, <laughs> the, in the last two months, I've heard you do it like three times. Maybe yeah. you're finishing it I don't up. get it, yeah. I don't know. We can hope. Balls I don't know. Drop. I hope so. I hope my dick grows a little bit. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, now it's turned from the little guy to Ben's getting fat. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I you mean, are. don't get me wrong. <laughs> I've put on probably a couple extra pounds that I don't need. But the issue with it is is the internet and the world has seen me grow up from being like that little kid. You were kid. like malnourished, yeah. possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't quite go that far. But oh. I was like that little kid to now I'm like normal. And it's such a change. People are like, holy shit, you're really getting fat. Like, no, I've just matured. You know, like when we started filming, if you go and watch the very first videos, I was like 18 years old. And a lot of people are like grown at that point. I just wasn't. My parents are both chiropractors and they're like insanely healthy people. And that trickled down to my, my brother and my sister and then there was me. But if you're a kid, you don't have an option. And, <laughs> and there was me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't have an option of that. So I would I would basically go over to my friend's house. Like, I would go over to Ryan's house, and I'd be like, holy shit, you have sugar cereal? I was like, what? Dude, that was the first thing you'd do. You'd walk in the door. You wouldn't even say hi it, eventually. You would just walk in, go to the pantry, grab the bag of Fruity Dino Bites, and sit down and eat. And then be like, what's up, bro? How's it going? And then you'd just talk for a while, and then yeah, you'd go man. grab a juice box. It was the same way at my house, too. I remember my parents, like... 
uh, cracking jokes to you when you were when, like, it'd be like fall and they'd be leaving for the winter and, <laughs> and they'd be like, it'd be like, Ben, you getting ready for hibernation? We better give him an extra <laughs> plate because <laughs> you were just loading up. Yeah, man. I especially, I mean, it still is like that. Maybe that's why I've packed on some extra now pounds you finally because I can just go out and just buy the food myself. <laughs> now. Yeah, I can pick my own diet. Yeah, it dude. is interesting, though, how, how everyone in your family is uh, still rather healthy, but it never stuck with you. You yeah. just weren't built that way. <laughs> no, dude, I'm like the black sheep of like. Mostly everything in the family, though. As I stated, like, both my parents are, are chiropractors. And, like, everyone in my family has followed down. My grandparents are chiropractors. My grandparents uh, on both sides. My aunt and uncles. I have uh, my sister-in-law now. Literally, since earliest I can remember, I never wanted to do that. And, like, everyone else in my family did, like my siblings. I dropped out of college. Uh, that was another thing. I was, like, kind of the first to do that. You definitely don't have the same diet. I, I don't mm. have the same diet. I don't really have... Well, me and my dad have a lot of the same interests. I was going to say that's, that. That's yeah. why I, I, I like uh, pretty much all the things that I do. Your your dad, your grandpa, your uncle, like they all love like motorcycles, snowmobiling. Like they, yeah, they they're insanely to, like, adventurous. Like, like insanely. They, will, they will go all the way to Alaska by themselves and then drive back. On yeah. a motorcycle by themselves. Yeah, like, that, is, that's one thing that I don't really have is like I like being with people. Right. But whereas is the rest of my family is okay with just being like alone and just being like a solo wolf. Where I, I love like the camaraderie of like the boys. Like right. I, would, I would much rather go with like the crew than by myself. But, but you're very similar in the fact of like you like uh you like cool cars. Yeah. Uh you like motorcycles, you like snowmobiles, you like boats. Like, yeah, I mean like that. everything you that fit I in very well. I'd everything say. that I guess I like. I guess you could attribute to someone in my family. Like my grandpa, me and CJ's grandpa has had like 27 Corvettes. So it was only right that Ben got a it Corvette. It was only right that I got a Corvette, which is that fun. Is I don't so know. It, dude, why are, why is our family such Corvette people? I asked them that before too. And they just said, I don't know. I don't know. We just like them. It's, it's like things like that are just so weird. I think, it, I think they said bang for your buck. Yeah. It is a lot of bang for your buck. For sure. Dude, my my dad, grandpa, uncle, all of them have literally traveled like the entire world. On a motorcycle, it's and mind blowing. Stuff. It is. It is really yeah. is mind blowing, and and I always thought that like, oh, I mean, you do that. You know, plenty of people have like family members like that, but like the older I get, it's like, no, that's that's pretty yeah. rare. Like, yeah, like true Especially by yourself adventure like that is really rare. And what I still don't fully understand is like the why aspect of it, right? Which I'm still trying to figure out. It doesn't sound like, as good of a time by yourself. <laughs> no, I, that's I don't fully get that, but uh. Yeah, man. I mean, since I was like a little kid, dude, my dad would just put me in between his arms and we would just go bang like 500 miles of trail on a snowmobile. Wow. Yeah. Or I would hop on the motorcycle and we would go like out to Montana and I would just be like a little tyke just yeah, hanging one, on. One could say like that it's in your blood. Yeah. When you start yeah. that early and you're crushing just crazy adventures even, like that. Even the, even the story about like when they got you your first snowmobile and you had that little pond in the back of your house and you could only keep it on the pond. So you yeah. do like, like 500 a, a laps, million yeah. laps a winter. They put me on a snowmobile when I was two years old. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. It really should be. Yeah. That's how I want to like raise my kid when I get one. Yeah. When I get one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I no like if you know, when I have kids one day, I definitely would want to raise them to be, uh, kind of like that adventurous soul, but I think there's so much to be said about teaching kids like motor skills when they're young too, because you know, when they get old enough to hop in a car, like they're Definitely. aware of their surroundings yeah. and, uh, they're just like so much more prepared than people that don't have that. It also helps, I think with your, uh, coordination, like reaction skills. Like yes, if you're exactly. on a bike like, yeah. and you're say riding a trail, you have to like make a decision every split second. Like, yeah. which route do I take? Do I go around this rock or whatever? Yep. You know, like, when we were in Akeley, like, if we would have rode a lot more single track, you would have had a lot of that. Right. Which we, I mean, kind of grew up doing. I'd imagine, though, if if uh, if I were to get hurt doing something that, like, my dad taught me how to do, like, that'd be pretty hard on him, you know? And, and, I, and I think about that for me, like, 
would I want to put my kid on a motorcycle yeah, but w- that could like endanger him or, or like get in an accident of some sort, you know? I will say though, like one thing though is like there's like two different sides to like putting your kid on a motorcycle or a snowmobile. It's like there's the guys that are like, you're going to race and like they, they get them racing like. You're gonna get hurt. It's inevitable. You're, you're probably gonna still get hurt riding a dirt bike in general. Yeah. Eventually, if you're gonna ride it long enough. But it was like you didn't have to hit jumps. They weren't telling you to hit jumps. Yeah, they weren't telling you to do dangerous to stuff. Go faster. And you know. Yeah. And like I definitely would like like what you were saying. I would never push my kid to do anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, because then you'll feel bad. But yeah. like if if they want to go and try to hit a jump, like go for it. I'm not, I'm not gonna be like you should hit that jump like. Well, I I would say I'm pretty moderate yeah, on, you're in on the like middle. the reckless yeah. scale. Like I don't I don't just throw on a helmet. I'm like I got a helmet on. This is protecting me <laughs> for anything. It's not like that, but yeah, it is. It is just being pretty aware of your surroundings and uh, getting those basic life skills. Have you ever gotten hurt? You know, riding. Like, what are some like, times dude, the, on the channel and off? Because on the channel, just in like, general, your yeah. whole life. The oh, first insane. first injury I ever had. That I can remember. Well, I fell off a piano bench and broke my arm when I was a little kid. Who knew piano could be dangerous? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were better on a dirt bike. Yeah. And then uh, I was riding with my brother, Sam, one day. And I came over this hill as Sam was coming down it. And he hit me. With his with his bike hit my uh, top of my foot. And I broke my foot. And oh. Sam, Sam was like, you can't tell mom and dad. If they find out that I hit you, like, I'm going to be in so much trouble. So I took that. I probably should have taken it to the grave. But, like, a couple of years back, I was just like, hey, remember that time so I broke my just foot? Found out? And I, I just told them a while back. And Wait, what would you do about it? Yeah, what would you tell you them? sure it was broken? Yeah. Oh, Sam was like, tell them that you tipped over and you crushed oh, it. Oh, okay. I was going to say. I was like, how the fuck do you have a broken foot and you just <laughs> wear it? <laughs> no, I, I think I did wear it for, like, a couple days and then i was like i think my foot's like messed up really big old black and blue God yeah damn so i guess damn. i got hurt like that uh i flipped over backwards doing a wheelie at like 60 one that's time right. that sucked. that was at the start that of the channel sucked, I was filming. dude yeah i literally skid down the road Ooh. and tore a, a hole in my shoulder through a jacket a sweatshirt a t-shirt and then into my skin and i probably still have a scar and after that i was like dude High speed wheelies are not to be fucked with, <laughs> but I really didn't slow us down. Actually, <laughs> literally, knock on wood, actually have not gotten hurt doing too many things. I'm trying to think back. I don't know. Can I you think guys that, think no, that's what, that was my genuine question? Was when we first started filming, you looped out really bad that one time, and then from then on, you've been lucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my memory of you being injured. Granted, you didn't really have like an accident. You uh you had to play like you played soccer and oh. you, like you wouldn't do any physical activity all summer and then come fall when you'd start soccer practice up apparently they would run you really hard yeah and I remember you couldn't walk bro you just reason. limp around you yeah. gimp around you'd you be like no around. I can't so we started calling you polio, polio boy but like I'm not kidding <laughs> yeah. you this I would kid gimp around and I had a cough I was like sick yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd be like, dude yeah I don't like he, he I'd be got, limping around what the heck happened CJ's Why'd like. Polio boy. Right, those are different times. You could say things like that. You could that. joke about polio. I mean, we, yeah, but anyways, well, I think now it is. I think it's it's okay. What do you mean? What happened? Well, like, like, how the hell do you you just ran and and apparently you it's couldn't like shin walk? splints, bro. It's like shin splints, but in your ankles, bro. You had and like it's just, you were like I don't know, crawling just, around. Or yeah, like, it was I think you even had like it's like the equivalent of crutches. It's like the equivalent of having two sprained ankles. Like that shit sucked. And he was just so little back then. And I would do it every single year. I wouldn't condition before soccer would start. Maybe it was because I was so malnourished, bro. Yeah. Well, that's why you look like you had polio. You were so skinny. You were so <laughs> coughing. <laughs> I was like, oh, a little polio, boy. You felt bad. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, that sucked. But well, speaking of soccer, Ben, uh, what about, uh, I don't know how old you would have been. How old would you have been when you got your minor? What? That's right, what a dude. Hell of a like transition. Well, I was soccer. thinking about it because there, it'll, it'll make more sense as we get into it. I think I know where you're going with this. Okay, so I was 16 years old, and we had just started. We had just started boozing. I want to say like everyone, and I just so happened to be the youngest well, in the group. Everyone so, else was, so when we was 19 a few years and, older than you. Yeah, yeah exactly. But even still, so I when, think we so, were all kind of just starting. Yeah. So when everyone else started boozing, it was just my time. And I just so happened to be 16 years old, right? I crushed like eight beers, 
Maybe, maybe even more. No, maybe. No, it was it maybe was a like lot. six. It was more than me. That's <laughs> Let's for go sure. in the middle. Let's say seven. All right. So I crushed seven beers and I was, I was fucked up. It was probably my like third time drinking ever. And uh, I, you know, started throwing up. My girlfriend at the time this was the first day hanging out with her, wasn't it? Wasn't my girlfriend. Yeah, it was like but just starting to talk to her. She is your girlfriend. My girlfriend now. Though. Yes, Amazing. exactly. Yep. What a and, start. Uh, what a start. She gives me a ride home to my house and I start throwing, uh, I was like dry heaving like in her car and, and her friends are in the back seat and they're like, pull over, pull over. <laughs> so we pull over on the side of the road and I start throwing up outside the door. Actually, I might have done the courtesy of just getting out and throwing up, right? At the one street light. At the one street light in between Cormorant and my parents' house. There literally is no street lights. No street lights. Terrible spot to yeah. stop. And I I come to, I look up, and I'm like, oh, shit. We're, like, kind of, like, in town, right? In, like, Cormorant town. <laughs> Underneath this street light, like, we should go. Like, we should get going. I hop it back in the car, and we start, to like, to pull out. Cop lights turn on behind us, and, and they're like, Cops pulling us over. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm just tweaking in the front seat, right? Cop comes up. Anybody been drinking tonight? My girlfriend is just like, you know, innocent and just silent. Her friend's in the back seat. He has. He has. <laughs> yeah, they just narked Holy me out. Holy shit. Uh, I'm like, oh, shit. I, you know, I like knew I was getting in trouble. Well, at that point, but yeah, still, you're so getting many, in trouble. Yeah, so, yeah. so much stuff running through your head at that point. Oh, yeah. Uh, next thing I know, you know, he's breathalyzing me and doing all this stuff. I, uh, get back in the car and he comes back and he goes, all right, here's the thing. You can either call your parents to come and pick you up or we can bring you to jail for the night. And I was contemplating it. I was like, <laughs> call my dad or go to jail. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I, okay, I'll call my parents, right? Call my dad pissed probably probably partially because i woke him up <laughs> but uh comes and picks me up um told the cop that he should have brought me to jail it was like this it would be easier than you know bringing him home and so we go home i'm still throwing up i'm still hammered right i'm throwing up he's videotaping it i'm sure he's still he's sitting over here laughing right now but uh he's videotaping it. i hope those videos never surface and uh I, I don't know. I get grounded and all this shit. They were like, well, you just fucked up your relationship with Greta. She's such a good girl. Like, she's never going to talk to you again. And I was like, I'm so screwed. Like, I was down in the dumps, right? I was like, ah, oh, they're going to tell the school. I'm going to get, right, I'm going to get, you know. Which is just that's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. When you get a minor. Yeah. Yeah. It's like playing with fire. I'm going to get suspended from my sports, which I didn't really care about, to be honest. Because I was like, I just played sports just to do it. And uh, what I was most worried about was all my friends finding out because I ha hung out with that friend group that was like anti-drinking, you know. It's, you like, had, like, it's like the cool kids in the group that are like, no, like the kids that drink in, in our grade are losers. We can have fun in any other way. Yeah. 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 Now now they're just full on losers now. now. Yeah. Because you, you, you now. had two, to clarify for the listener, you had two different groups. You had like our group because yes. we didn't go to school together. Yeah. We just lived around this area. Yep. And then you had... My uh, like your friend, friend group, group from, yeah, school, from school, yeah, that you went to school with, and that's how so they were. I was just like super worried about people finding out. Honestly, I was just like that self conscious uh, high schooler, you know. I mean, it's probably not the best thing for people to find out. No, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want my girlfriend's parents to find out, and it was just not a good look. Been you talk know? of the town. Been talk of the town. It's a small town. I go to school on Monday, no call. Tuesday, no call. Wednesday, no call. Next week, next no week call. comes by, and and after that second week, I was like, I think I'm actually good. But dude, you didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell None anyone. of your friends. Uh, Greta's friends in the back seat didn't tell anybody. It's pretty good. I have it's absolutely pretty. no idea how nobody found out. And you kept playing soccer. And I kept playing soccer and golf and all and that you shit. And you suspended. kept boozing on the weekends yeah. too. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, dude. Those of you that go to any small school or even medium sized school, like you. People just, they're going to know. You you want to know why I think you got out of it? Why they didn't find out about it? Uh, it's because you live here in Cormorant, and most people that live in this area would go to Lake Park, yeah. another small school, but you went to Detroit Lakes. Yep. And 
I guarantee you the cop maybe like told the Lake Park person or whatever. Yeah, and ben? he was like, hey, yeah. And then this guy's like, I don't fucking know who that is. And that was it. <laughs> you know, I don't know, dude. I've, I've played it over so many times as to what could have happened. And I still have no idea. Just haunts you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it really, like, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Like, when have you ever heard of that happening? Most no time people don't have the entire internet and world to yeah. tell the story to afterwards. Saying, like, but I've never heard of that. Someone gets a minor, even if I literally could like not have ever even met them. Let's say, but they go to my school. Like you're gonna find out, dude. You guys want to know the craziest part? <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Oh shit! Okay, so you you have to you know you pay a fine. You have to do community service. I don't know. I can't even remember what else you have to do. Oh, you have to write an essay about never drinking again and everything. <laughs> Dude, I did my community service at the fucking high school. At the high school on a Saturday. <laughs> and no one was like, what are you doing? Bro, it was the craziest. I was like, oh my God, you could. we could do it anywhere else in the world. And I would have been... I would have been fine, but of course it has to be at the one place I don't want finding out about it. And what, what did they it still never found out. What did said community service consist of? Oh, uh, I just like had to clean everything. It's just like, Bro, I don't I, know, doing like the dirty work, like the janitor's assistant. Yeah, yeah I had to do that just for being late. Oh, so you really? had it pretty easy. Yeah, I was like, I had to help the janitors clean just for having tardies. And you got, you have to serve community service. Well, Mike, when you're late. That many Serious. times they start <laughs> punishing you. To it's the about the degree. same equivalent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Getting a minor is nothing. That's not a big it, deal. It's not. Well, I shouldn't say that. You don't want to. Yeah, I was like that. absolutely. It, I mean, it, it really is. Yeah, I, I would not recommend it by any means. I got off pretty easy, but like, it's not a good look. You know, no, I wouldn't suggest it. No. I wouldn't suggest it's not by the end of yeah. the world if you get one though. But yeah, I think that, <laughs> maybe move that's, on, that's the thing. I, yeah, I want to yeah. say like your life's not over. That's sometimes you know in the middle of a kid getting that. It's a lot right, worse things you're, you you're can thinking do. your life might be over in that small instance, but it's not. Yeah, you know, I think that's just one of the things that uh, kind of comes with being the youngest one of the group when we have such a, a vast range of ages. Yeah, you know, because Ken just turned what twenty one or twenty two. Because I remember Ken supplied the alcohol. So if the cops, <laughs> if the cops are coming, if the cops are listening right now and they're trying to. Do something, put yeah, this guy I mean, in handcuffs. <laughs> Ken wasn't. He would have been like twenty. No, I'm kidding. Ken didn't supply the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so then, shortly after that, it would have been probably the following year. Your senior year is kind of when we started posting to YouTube. Yeah. What was uh What was that like? I mean, you were still in high school. So yeah, did, dude. Did people say anything? No, no. Honestly, did anyone, did, were we not getting enough I think traction? We're finding out no. Ben's just not a popular kid in high school. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is. Uh, people are watching this right now. He went to Detroit <laughs> Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Um, honestly, when we started filming our videos, I remember my like immediate friends thinking it was really cool, and they were like Good they friends. they were supportive of it, and and they thought it was cool. I I had I had one teacher that. You know, said to like the classic, like, oh, you can't make money on the internet or that's not a job or that's not cool or some shit. I don't even remember. I mean, that shows how much it affected me. But uh, other than that, because like you got to remember, we were pretty small that first year, dude. I'm trying to even think. What did we even have like when I would have graduated? 50K? Yeah, something like that. 50, really didn't 60. Have many. Going into college, were we even at 100? We were probably just hitting like 100 when Maybe, we were yeah. going into college. That's such a small, that's, you know, it's not a lot to talk about. But, yeah, I could definitely see where people would, in high school especially, get affected by trying to start something because of other people, quote unquote, thinking it's like not cool. And it's always, like, the cool kids that love to just, like, make little jokes. And then all, like, the kids that suck the cool kids' dick, uh, you know, hopping on board. And then that's – it's just, like, a compound effect of, of like, bullying or, or, like, putting people down on it. But, yeah, man, I was, I was pretty lucky as to where I was, like, at in my life. And, uh, you know, yeah, I've, 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 yeah, I've always been, like, pretty confident. And I don't really look to other people for – you know, like their approval. So like that, I don't know. I like, I, I think back to those times and I was just like, so I was so sure of what we were doing that it was like cool. 
you know, it didn't, it didn't affect me. Now that I look back at the videos, I'm like, oh shit, I would have probably fucking bullied me, <laughs> you know, but it's like, I don't know. It's just like the small snowball that grows into something more. And I was just at like a really good, good yeah, stage of my life. Optimal timing. I, I was, feel like I was you were super lucky, lucky being young yeah. because mm-hmm. you're like, yep. you got a jump start on your entire or our career. You know, we were like 20, 20 years old, kind of kicking off where people are like, oh, you're going to go get that internship. And then I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. But you were just graduating high school. So that's yeah. kind of cool for you that like you were able to like get such a good jump out of high school. And the thing about it is I, I always wanted to do some kind of business or start my own business or, or I don't know. I, I just knew I wanted to do something in business and make a lot of money. Honestly. You want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I think I just saw this as such a good opportunity and so much potential. Like from the get go, you know, I've, I was always like really about it. Like I didn't have to be convinced to do it. I don't know. I just saw something in it right. and I was willing to literally throw my life away for it because I didn't have a whole lot going for me outside of that, you know? Like yeah, I was like, oh, if it, if it, it works, great. if it works, yeah. great. That's what I, that's what I uh, want to do. If it doesn't, I'm really not out anything. Right. How long did you go to college for? Like year and a half, barely though, dude. When I went to college, I I knew from the moment I walked through the doors at college on the first day, I was gonna drop out. I knew, like, I was like, I don't know why I'm even here on the first day of school because I'm gonna drop out, whether it's in a semester or three fourths of the way through college. I was like, I'm going to drop out of college. I'm literally just here until the rest of my comrades agree with me, which being like you guys. I was like, I just have to convince everyone to also drop out or for for Mike to just like quit his job and everything like that. And like one by one by one, like we did. Yeah. You told me that many times. You were like, this is not even done with your first year. You're like, I'm going to drop out. I want to drop out at least. But yeah, it was the continual like adults around you shaming you kind of i mean not saying that affected you that much but it was one factor you're just like no i'm gonna do it i just trying to figure out the best time yeah exactly and and, i mean it kind of goes back to like the small town thing and like the only real connection i kind of have to like the outside world is like my girlfriend you know And, and and i i always go to her like okay so like if i do this like what 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 are people saying like on the outside, right. what do people think? Like, what do you, what would your parents think, and and everything like that? And that was kind of like the only thing that really deterred me from doing it just from the get go. And granted, she would have never cared or like told me not to, but it was just like that's like my connection to like the real world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of just went with the status quo. If if like people are watching this right now and they're like, I don't know if I should go to college or not. Go to a cheap college. You don't have to go to an expensive college. Go to a cheap college if you're kind of in between until you find like that thing that you want to do. Don't I, get all suckered Because what are you going to do with two years Yeah, don't get suckered in. And then kick, you know, two years of generals and you walk out. What do you have to show for that? Nothing. But two years of a trade at a school. Or that. Yeah, exactly. But like the people that are like, I don't, I don't know if I want to go to college, but... Uh, I want to like start my own business. It's like either start your own business and like do it a hundred percent or just go to college and like dabble in it until you figure out what your thing is that you want to quit college for. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't think, I think people overthink it. I overthought it for sure. I think the tides are changing though. The tides are changing. Cause like, I mean, uh, our first ever hire, Justin, <laughs> what, what are, he's sitting behind the cameras. Right now. What do you, you, you're not in school right now. You just graduated high school, right? He's in online schooling, but, you know, like, he didn't jump into just going right to a big university. And, I mean, same with my brother, same with uh, a few of his friends. Like, I feel like the tides are changing. People are starting to realize, like, eh, you know. And I understand the experience of college, but once it's done, it's done. And you just drank the whole time, and you're still a dumb idiot with a bunch of debt now. So Yeah, yeah. college experience is only worth so much. Exactly. The experience is great for the memories. And I'm not, I didn't mean like you're going to be a dumb idiot. Only <laughs> some people will. Some most hopefully won't. When I was in college, I can probably count on one hand the amount of times that I went to like a college party. Like, I feel like looking back at that part of our life, it was such a grind time. And I don't even know what the fuck we were doing. Yeah, you didn't even have time <laughs> for that. We were, I just remember being like so focused 
on just working and I didn't really care what it was working on. It was just like doing something productive that like grew the brand in, in any kind of way. I didn't have a college experience, literally. Well, because you were in the dorm, right? And your roommate was rather odd. Strange he's guy. Fine, but, yeah. uh, I stayed at my dorm room two, once. One, okay, <laughs> one time. I just that's insane, dude. Yeah. Like you literally just one didn't night. go there. One night. I stayed there one night. Either I would just stay at the lake and just drive in, or I'd stay at the Sea Boys house, the college house, or Greta's. Yeah. What you were working on though, like if we backtrack a little bit, it was your idea to start uh the merch. I mean, it was it was very common for YouTubers to do merch, but you were like, We should do merch. Mm -hmm. rather early i mean you were you took the initiative and you got it all set up when i was a senior in high school i interned for my girlfriend greta's dad uh he he owns a screen printing company and they're like crazy successful like massive Um, huge that's actually kind of like down to the root of of why i wanted to always do something in business and why i wanted to own my own business i saw that and i saw all the other really successful businessmen and I always like admired their 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 schedule, their income, and just like being a boss. I so I always knew I wanted to do that. But when I was interning for him, it was at around the same time that we were, we uh, had started the YouTube channel, and they had like these old screen printers. They were like the manual screen printers, so you'd like burn off a screen, and then you would like manually press the ink through the screen onto the shirt and then you put it on this oven and it would bake the the ink to the shirt boom you have a t-shirt i think we were at like 50 30 000 subs or something like 50. that 50 000 and um i don't even know if we were at that honestly ryan and i did the math it like if you started those shirts i think it was like november or december we had only been we had just started posting in September. There's how the hell did we generate fifty thousand subs from zero? Yeah, we, we had to have been at like if we're lucky, you had twenty thousand. Way too early, in hindsight. But at the time, I was just like excited to do something and try something new, and it was like anything to make money. Just like doing something. Yeah. Like I'm not like entirely money driven. Like I don't really care about that. But it's like feeling that sense of like, oh man, we. We did something really successful. We just dropped a really good video. People are reacting to it. They love it. Like It's like little things like that that make me so much happier. And at the time, it was like, if we can create our own t-shirts and sell them to literally 25, 50 people, and they, they love the t-shirts, and we got like a sense of like, we built this with our hands, Like that's all I want. I literally taught myself how to burn screens in my parents' living room or in my parents' basement furnace room. All by yourself. <laughs> with Micah. <laughs> we taught ourselves how to uh, burn these screens, print the t-shirts. We had like the, the shittiest supplies. This is all we could afford. We would use this oven thing that was meant to just like, it's called flash the ink. So it's like if you flash it, then you can print another color on top of it. Well, we would use the flash to cure the entire shirt. We... Uh, had our screen printer set up at Ken's uncle's, our neighbors over there at the time. And uh, we took one of their old refrigerators and put it on its side. And that's what we would use for the base of the, of like the oven to flash over it. And we would carry it like across. But like moral of the story is, I, I don't know. I was just like excited to do something and like creating another source of revenue. And we were, we were using that money just to like fund the, the channel and just like yeah. i don't know just like grow and yeah. it, it was like pennies at the time because i mean we'd make like yeah let's say a 1500 bucks we'd, we'd make that back and that you know that was just enough oh cool now we can buy another peanut mm-hmm. yeah little things like that because youtube didn't youtube didn't pay us like at all well we weren't getting many views we weren't getting many views exactly and it's it's hard to make money off of videos that aren't pulling aren't views. Any views yeah yeah, yeah dude i remember learning how to do that and it's such a it's such a process like printing 50 shirts would take i don't know so probably what 20 hours it was like, hours. It was oh like once we got into from like them, burning like, the screens yeah. to printing it to cleaning the screens Shipping like it's such out. a process right we and became we, more of a screen printing company than literally than yeah YouTube at one company. point yeah so as like, like as like a side hustle me and micah would go out and print shirts for other companies 
you know, we were doing it for like a trucking company and, and just literally Random. any any way to put money in our pocket because at the time we were just like full time YouTubers and not getting paid. Ben is easily the most entrepreneurial spirit I've ever met. And so when we were filming videos, we weren't full time yet. We were keep in mind, you know, so that's why he had the idea to like, he's like, let's do merch because should you do merch at 30, 40, 50 K subs? Probably no. not. No, you shouldn't. Nope. No, you shouldn't at all. Like but, not even a probably not. But you the just reason, shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't. You should focus on the content for yeah. sure. But the reason we did was because when we would get together, we could only film one video a weekend and it might not even be a full, full video because again we weren't full time so when we had all this downtime yeah we were like, like everyone else had kind of jobs yeah yeah we didn't have a great system no it we is didn't the way it had to be on but we, we didn't know we needed a system because how are we going to make a system for youtube videos that don't make us any money when i look back at at the road of business that has brought me to here i would consider myself delusionally optimistic and delusionally entrepreneurial. And it's like doing more is not doing the most, though. Back then, though, I, I Anything, you definitely thought that. You were pretty well, bullheaded. Was, you were like, we're going to just outwork everyone. We're going to work all the time. Like, if yeah. you're not here helping fold shirts, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, it was very bullheaded, I would say. I think there is something to be said about having that mentality, and then, which is good, but almost moving that energy into into something that's more efficient. I remember at one point you were coming out, like, I couldn't believe it. You were coming up with so many good ideas. Bro, you'd that, come up with a business idea yeah. every week. And, it was like I couldn't like, keep up with and them. And they were good, too. And so it's like we were like, oh, should we do that? And then we would entertain the idea for a while. And then we realized after a long time that if we put our eggs in the YouTube basket and really cruise on, then it would do good. But, yeah, you ever, you had, we had, like, an, we had an idea to uh, – Del Open an ice cream shop. Ice cream shop. We had an idea to uh, deliver uh, firewood to people around the lake. Yeah. Goodwood. Uh, Goodwood. Print t-shirts for people just lake-based. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. But it's like ideas are only so good without any execution. But also like that motivated me. Every, you came up with so many ideas, that around, circles around me, that I was like, we'll make something work. Although that those years we definitely weren't working the most effectively – we really did like we literally pulled our YouTube channel up by the bootstraps. Yeah. We're like, all right, we no matter even if printing the t shirts wasn't the smartest idea, we worked seventeen hours a day every weekend. We would get there Friday night, we'd work all day till three AM. I remember we'd get a pizza. We'd get to that order a pizza reward. as payment. <laughs> yeah. And we would just grind for those like dude, like two years. That was what we did. And in that way, it gave us all something to do to keep us focused on the business. Yeah. And in a roundabout yeah. way, I really think that is what got us through those beginning years when YouTube wasn't paying us. And when making a video only was so much work. Granted, we probably could have gotten here way faster if we'd made four videos a weekend. Mm -hmm. But it was for just sure. what we did at the yeah. time. Yeah, it was part of the journey and I wouldn't change it for anything. Exactly. But it's like now that... I've gone down that path. Like I have a pretty good outlook on, on business just because of how much we've done mm -hmm. and how yeah. much like I've tried to do. Like if somebody comes up to me and is like, Oh, I want to do this or I have this idea. I have a pretty good idea whether it's going to work or not because of the amount of things that we've tried. Yeah, you know? that's true. And you're able to guide them. You're able to give them uh, you know, a handful of sentences and be like, all right, go do it. I, yeah. I think that goes back to, you know, like you were pretty bullheaded back then. Now you you think more, I would say. But uh, you've obviously learned that from experience. Um, yeah, now it's like I don't really want to waste time. It's weird, though. Uh, speaking of time, like we were, we would sit there and print shirts in a shop all night and all day on a Saturday and literally doing nothing. But we were hanging out. But honestly, like I don't remember like thinking like this sucks. Mm -mm. I just it was, was like, we were just doing it because, and keep in mind, also we, were, we didn't really have much else to do. We were still, and we were still making more money than we would, uh, like, you know, working Not doing it. Yeah. I was just like, this is dope. Yeah. Like we're printing our own shirts, you know, we're making money and we're, we're also, yeah, like it was just, it was fun. It was fun, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, no, realistically it wasn't the right, yeah, it the just, right way to do things, but you never really know the right way to do things. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting times yeah. that like now 
we'll still work until three in the morning, right? Yeah, it's just happens un- all the none time. None of us have However, a problem with that at all. Yeah, but, yeah, no problem. However, back then we would do it with literally without even thinking about it. It mm-hmm. wasn't this like ah tonight's gonna be a late night. It wasn't like that. We literally would just work. I'd be like, oh shoot, it's literally four in the morning. It's kind of nice get when, some you, when you don't have much other option. That's just kind of what you did, though. Mm-hmm. You just no, did it was great. There wasn't right. a whole lot yeah. of other choices. To, like, the grind was fun. It was like going through a mirror house at the fair, but we just ran. We didn't, like, stop and look <laughs> at which way was the smartest way to make it through, and we ran into every glass, and every so often, <laughs> we would get through a hole, and it would just keep pushing us along down the road. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. How many times have you had someone come up to you, and, like, they'll be, like, talking, like, this happens to me all the time. I think it happens to you guys too, but it'll be like someone who's trying to do like a YouTube channel or be like an influencer of some sort. And they like come up and they're like, yeah. So like they start talking to you about like how they, they're going to start their merch and their, their merchandise is like their name. And I'm like, okay, nice. And then, and then you found you like, so what do you do? And they're like, well, I haven't started posting my videos. And I'm like, well, how are you going to sell the shirts? You don't have it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, that's happens more than the steps. They get too caught up in, that's like step D, but you got to go A, B, C before that. Yeah. I mean, if anyone watching this right now wants to start a YouTube channel, I wouldn't even consider merch until you have, I don't know, 100,000. Like stickers at most. If you have stickers like stickers. stickers, stickers yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. say if you have a but good like, following. Literally cult just following. double down on just YouTube. Just make the content. Just yeah. make the content and then everything else will follow. Yeah, I think you see that a lot of times with like the bigger creators now. They are they are mostly content based because there is a lot of money to be made on YouTube. Yeah. And it, if you realize that and you just double down on that, then the rest will follow. But we didn't have anyone telling us that. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't I guess it is very subjective based. I wouldn't say there's like a certain amount that you should start. Even if you do have 30,000, you might have 30,000 really really loyal. you got people That's asking followers, for it. but I'm just saying like just the keep that content mind. is the is the number one thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, like if you're selling if you want to make a clothing brand, it's a different story, but yeah. Right, yeah. You want to you're sell your shirts brand. because you want to have a cool YouTube channel? Have a cool YouTube channel first. Yeah. Yep. Kind of brings us up to today now. You know, what what would you say like your roles nowadays? I yeah, I, I wear a lot of hats. For sure. I'd say just like my main roles, though, like off the top of my head would be editor, which I don't love. I'm actually pretty good at Pretty good at it. Yeah, pretty good at it. But like, I, I don't really love it. I don't find a passion in it. Neither does CJ, but we're pretty good it needs at to get it. Done. Yeah, it needs to get done. So I don't really have a problem with that. I taught myself how to edit. Um, let's see what would have been four years ago. It was just like a slow process of just getting a little bit better. Yeah. Every, every video let's see so that uh, i do like the accounting work so i like you know pay m- most of the bills and which then is fun- uh, which i don't know why this is funny but it's funny because you're the youngest yeah I it's not it's, it's normal just, now but before i think you just yeah. came into for some reason when you it was like we needed to set up the the quickbooks and you were the one who did, did it yeah. i was just like all right I'll and do your mom it. showed yeah. you how to do it so yeah. then you just became the guy yeah so i pay like all the taxes all the checks to to pay all of our um wages and everything like that vendors yeah so believe it or not vendors ben, ben all that a, shit he's a smart guy he believe it or not well despite what you see i i don't know that's my next question though you know <laughs> well hold on hold on my roles we'll get to we'll get to how stupid i am after let's see what else Come up with a lot of the video ideas, um, do a lot of filming, do a lot of the talking, obviously. Um, I can help when, you out. When merch, drop, when merch drops come around, most of the photos. Uh, I used to work with Mike pretty closely on the merch, but kind of handed that off to uh, Ryan and Ken. But they still work with Mike. I still do. I try and sit in and, and give you like ideas and yeah, like uh, for example, like the stay stoked that that whole idea that was your idea. Yeah, I drew that. I, on, just I drew it, that on Snapchat. Yeah, you just, I just it. sent it to you. I said make this into a logo. I bring it to life. So everyone helps with that. But helps with yeah, that. It is. It is interesting. Ben and I were like right hand men as far as creating the merch, and now it's relatively hands off because you have so many other hats to wear. Yeah, a lot of other stuff. What else is on there? I guess it's hard. To I think you think. named them all. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, Do you feel like as the youngest guy in the group, you have anything to prove to like other people or to us? Like, do you feel like growing up that way that you were like, I have to make a name for myself or I have to do more? 
No, honestly, gonna... not at all, dude. I feel like I wish I did less. <laughs> like, I wish Ken being the oldest in the group was like, I'm the oldest in the group. I should do more. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I don't know. It's no, just, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really have like, I would like to think I don't have a much of an ego when it comes to that of like, I need to make, I need to prove myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like or you don't, like I feel that. like you definitely do more than enough to prove yourself. And I don't oh, think you have you. an ego. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I feel like you don't think you're any younger than anyone else. Everyone feels the same. Also, I don't, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't necessarily Especially look at myself now. as like the youngest. Especially now. Yeah. Once I hit like 21, before that, different. oh man, Things life, life kind of sucked before <laughs> 21 because all of my friends would just leave me and I would just be back. I do remember <laughs> that. We'd just hit you with like the, sorry, homie. Sorry. We're yeah. Leaving. It's like all good. I'd probably do the same. Yeah. So no, I don't, I don't feel like I have mm -hmm. to prove myself being like by age. I, I definitely try and like work as hard as possible and like inspire others to work work really hard to like bring others up you know what i'm saying I don't <laughs> yeah know. <laughs> you're a positive energy versus a negative energy yeah i'd say you're definitely a, a natural leader like when you're in the room you you people know you're in the room you, i don't think you're ever in the room and people don't know that you were in there but i mean that comes down Which to like not great. wasting time you're like hey i'm you know let's let's get something rolling here let's not lollygag yeah okay to answer your question though with age i feel like it's like a little weird being so much younger, but still coming off as like, I don't want to be like bossy, but I also want to get shit done. Mm -hmm. And it's tough when you're the youngest one because it does come off more as bossy, mm -hmm. you know, I but, you but it's good. like, no, we're like, put age aside. We're trying to accomplish the same thing. I'm going to just be harder on you. And that's why I don't because think I want to get it done faster. As, we're not like, damn, like, Ben should not be telling us, you know, we don't ever think that for a second. Okay, good. Be, yeah, because we're all on the same page. We're trying to see, achieve the same goal. Good. Okay. It would suck so if we did know. think that. Yeah. We're just like, dude, this, this fucking kid. This kid. <laughs> I was going to ask you, you know, obviously you did, you, you were smart at one point. I was, I used to be. That was nice. At one point. <laughs> um, but I mean, us as a group, we were talking the other day when you were out of the room. Yeah. You know. Yep. We, we feel like you're getting dumber every day, <laughs> but the real, this is going to really solidify it. Are you seeing what we're seeing? <laughs> do, I mean, that depends. Well, I mean, what are just, you seeing? Do you feel like you're getting dumber as time goes on? You know, when you say that, it does kind of get under my skin because I don't feel like I'm getting dumber every that's day. That's exactly what someone that's getting dumber every day would say. <laughs> I they think would be unaware of it. <laughs> Who originally said this? CJ. Oh, yeah, when you ran over. Well, I ran over a box in the driveway because I was driving a monster truck. <laughs> I drove over a tiny little cardboard and guess box. What? No, no guess... it was just a breaking point. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I feel, yeah. I was like, but guess what we ended up doing with that box? Throwing, Throwing it away. Right well, yeah, because Ben drove over. <laughs> Broke it. No, I crushed it. everything in it. <laughs> okay, uh, be honest with me. Do you think I'm getting dumber? No, I wasn't even a part Not of it. Not every day, but most days, yeah. Do you actually? I think maybe you're just so in your head thinking that you're unaware of what's going on. Which wouldn't even count as, as dumber. To, as to what, like, give me an example. We'll be having a conversation, like, maybe it's just you don't listen. I'm just But I'm it just makes you listening. seem really dumb. It doesn't mean I'm I'll dumb, be like, I'm just not listening. All right, here's the video uh, schedule. We're doing this, this, and this, and this on this day. And then literally right after that, you go, hey, so what are we doing for Thursday? <laughs> I'm like, I just said it. It's just written on the board just, right there. I just, I just might have blanked out and wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason, like, I'm ever sarcastic. If we have, like, a legitimate plan and something is happening at this time and we go, hey, something's happening at this time, and then someone goes, hey, when's that happening? That's yes, the only Mike, reason yes, you're sarcastic? No, Mike, Not we, the only no, reason. You're That's a sarcastic a asshole. Yes. Fine. You know what? Maybe we're biased. Maybe we're just, you know, we we are quick to snap. <laughs> but uh, what Maybe. if, you know, you and your girlfriend have been together a really long time. Jesus. Are how, we doing how long this? have they been, you guys been together? Almost six years. Six years. So she knows you. And she's probably would see if you're having an incline, a decline, staying the same. In, what in if mental I, capacity. Yeah. Well, I'm actually intrigued right, well, I'm gonna to hear what right she now. has to say. I'm going to call her right, right so now. All right, so this is our first phone call guest on our uh, Life Wide Open podcast. So this is kind of a big moment here. Hey, Greta. 
Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Good. Why are you calling me? Well, Ben's in the hot seat. Yes, he is. He is. He is. So, so we're kind of at. Uh, well, it is a pretty important question we have for you, actually. Uh oh. What is it? <sighs> you know, you you and Ben have been together a really long time, and yep. obviously, you you know him very well. And we're just curious yeah. if you're seeing exactly what we're seeing, you know, just being with him every day. How do I say this nicely? Yeah. <laughs> do you feel oh, like no. he do you feel like he is getting dumber? No. <laughs> She's dumber. so nice. <laughs> okay. Well then I never mind. Know. It might be us. It might be us. Double down on it, said, Oh my gosh, no. Absolutely. So, so you not. Don't. I think he's getting smarter. No. Holy shit. All right. Well, there we go. There we go. All right. I'm sorry. That's probably not the That was it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Wait, hopefully. Wait, actually, you act, what? Do you actually think he's getting dumber? Listen, Greta, we don't want to change your opinion on Ben. You guys <laughs> live happy together delusionally. It's oh, all good. Ben, I don't think you're getting dumber. Thanks, babe. At least you got one person. You're going <laughs> all right. Thanks, Greta. Didn't mean I'm to on scare you. Bye, guys. All right, see ya. That is funny, dude. She 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 well, could genuinely know. she could genuinely think you're getting dumber and still lie. That's Too true. Nice. Yeah, Too she's nice. she's great. She really not is. saying she did that, but shit. Now you now you make me question it. <laughs> you you that, okay? Fast forward to you. I'm like, a, hanging out with her tonight or something, and you're like, babe. So were you telling the truth? Lying. Get like, a lie detector tech. <laughs> oh shit! Bring in the I'm lie detector. Day. Yeah. No, I don't. I honestly. I don't think I'm getting dumber. I'm just probably getting worse at listening. Yeah, I yeah. think that's ultimately what it is. A lot yeah. of distractions. Not even bad distractions, just a lot of distractions. I, yeah, probably, like, yeah, I mean, I am thinking a lot. <laughs> well, there, yeah, <laughs> so that, that, that is what it is. I am constantly, like, in my You're own, in your own world. world. Yeah, so I could see that, but, it, I mean, it is kind of frustrating when you get, I think there is some genuine uh honesty in your guys' statement of that I'm getting dumber. Like, I'm it comes a, off as kind of like a joke, but I think you do you do believe that. If we could find a way just to bring you to school <laughs> one day a week. No, no. Just the only, no it's not, it's the not only, dumb, like, like yeah. smart <laughs> dumb. I, I get what you're saying, though. The only way I could ever clown on you for that is if, like, you know, it's like I'd have to figure myself out before I can call you dumb, you know? <laughs> I think that's I think actually where the, where the term dumb every day got coined. Was when Ben was driving the Mustang and ran. No, I box. think it had to be around you. I hadn't heard it up until that day, oh. so okay. you guys just call me dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough on the dumb talk. Yeah, back to the smart talk. Yeah, last podcast you said that you were gonna have a new goal. Oh shit! Like a, a non goal a non-monetary goal. Yeah, material based. Like uh, company wise, I'll, I'll make it easier on you. Um, so I'm not gonna ask you like. What's your five-year plan? Because I literally think that's the stupidest Basic. question. We don't know where we're going to be tom- tomorrow. Yeah. Um, like, it, let alone, you must have a really stable life if you have a five-year plan. Yeah. Uh, looking out a year, what would you like to accomplish within that year? Well, your personal life um, or just even the business, I, I'd say. Like, what are some goals that you would, would like to do or even just things you'd like to do? Uh, I'd say one of my... One of my favorite things that we're doing really good at is we're getting a more defined schedule where I'd like in, in, in a year, I'm going to know what I'm going to be doing in two weeks or next week, because I think like the more we are planned out and scheduled out, the more successful we'll be mostly because it, it does, it does force us to like sit down, think of, of video topics, schedule them out, you know, the bigger ideas. If, if we want to do a, take time if we want to do a big idea, well, we need a month to prepare this or that and that. And I think with that will come, you know, just more success overall, more views, more subscribers. Uh, you know, if, when you said like, what's a goal of yours, like a goal of mine is to just get to every video, hit a million views. I really, that's going to be like a, big moment for like i've been waiting for ever since a million subscribers it's in all right now how do we get the views to every single video hit a million views like a cult following of a million people that's right? huge that's yeah, that, huge that was like, really that, hard that to do feels a 
better than hitting a million subscribers. Like I want, I want to go to go to our and YouTube page and just, and just scroll one mil, one mil, one yeah, mil. You know, like so something like of, that. A lot of views. Like I think going that's gonna that's gonna be cool. really good. Uh, a little bit more of like a defined schedule. Um, like personally wise, I'd like to buy a house. You know, like I don't really want to buy a starter home. I want to buy like a nice, like oh. a nice lake home. You know, so I'm gonna just keep saving until I can do that. I mean, like, you're only 22. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Holy shit. I love that we are almost, we're, we're continuing to just work smarter yeah. as to like delegating jobs to people that are, or we can just hire it out to, you know, I, I eventually don't really want to edit, you know, I want to hire that out basically every waking moment, not working in the business, just working on it, like working like bigger scale and just growing it as a whole instead of doing like the like the small minute tasks that need to get done. Mm-hmm. So I like in a year out, ideally just like just constantly thinking of big video ideas and just filming video ideas yeah. and just filming like banger videos like that. When I think of like what makes me uh, like most fulfilled and happiest, it's when we finish a video and we sit down on the couch and we watch it and we all get up and we're like, yeah, damn, we made something out of nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like we, we created a, vi- a 20 minute video, a piece of content that the entire world can consume. That will be on the internet forever. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, everyone loves it and we feel really good about it because as like, as being the, you know, a uh, large part of the video ideas guy and the filmer and the personality and then the editor. It's like taking literally nothing and then creating something so refined and funny and enjoyable and creative. Mm-hmm. That feels so Art. good. That's probably what, you know, one of the top things that makes me happy and like most fulfilled I don't know. Like, I'm just, like, addicted to that. I agree. That's a yeah, good I'm, I'm, like, like, I'm so like, addicted. I'm on. so addicted to that. And it's not even, like, the money aspect of it at all. It's just making something that's good that people enjoy. And obviously, oh and I just want to do more of reflect that. Ju- on that. But at the end of the day, yeah, it's just, like, as long as people are responding well, a lot of people are responding well. And I think back, I think back to, you know, our, our YouTube journey and, like, the, the, my state of mind when we were here, here, here. And I'm like, I feel so dialed in right now where I'm so confident in the next year. If I can get to the only thing that I think about is just making good videos and just growing the the content side of things. Like if that's all I'm focusing on, how successful we'll be. Hiring people is obviously like bettering ourselves, but it's also growing, you know, it's like literally growing our team and it will also grow our mindsets. Honestly, I love the podcast because it shows us such a different side of us that you would never see on on the normal videos. And I think it creates so much more depth. Over the next year, I want to get to a a place where I'm I'm so much more than just a YouTuber where I have I have so many different opinions on things that matter and I can like make a difference. Like what I say, people will stop and listen to because they're like, "Oh, he he has like knowledge on it and is like respectable." And I don't I like I want to just become more diverse and more than just like a like a crazy entertainer like that. You know, I think Logan Paul has done such a good job of that. Like he's like one of my idols when it comes yeah. to just like taking uh, something that was like he was strictly just entertainment based to where now he's like an educator and, and people like respect what he says. And that's what I love about like this podcast is like it gives us a platform to show people that we're more than just what you see. Yeah. And like, I want to continue to just be better at that, even though I'm getting dumber every day, you know, but like, I, I, I want people, a joke. I want people to you know, listen to what I say and have a reason for them to listen to what I say. And as they continue to listen, we get better at saying those things. 100%. Just like, yeah, just like refining like the, the parts of me that I see need work. And then just like doubling down on it, you know, and I think everyone's doing a really good job at that. Like you guys are seeing it real time. Like we're, we're constantly evolving. And I feel like in the last uh, six months to a year, we've really just like turned on the turbo boosters of that. And now it's just like rockets blazing. We're going forward.
and it's either like hop on board or get fucking run over. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good news. Is I don't think anyone's skeptical now, but you know, they're, you're watching your favorite YouTuber, and you're always like, I hope they keep going. That's you know, that's a, most people's goal with us or with anyone. It's just like I just hope they keep uploading, and that is absolutely our goal. If I were to quit C Boys tomorrow, I don't foresee a world of not being some sort of of an entertainer either you know like I, I don't think i could just go and work like a normal job or like a normal startup company granted i'm like very entrepreneurial where i know that i could go and start my own business tomorrow and be successful and honestly probably make more money than we are right now That's an interesting point you know being if there was just one thing and you just like create a business right yeah. there's so many things we talk about it all the time there's so many ways to make a lot of money right now it's a cash and grab right now. it's a cash grab for sure and like i don't doubt in my mind for a second if i wanted to do that i could but like i just see so much potential in youtube as a whole like it's only it's only getting bigger and you only see more and more people wanting to become youtubers you know it's like the best job ever why wouldn't why would you not so like i don't foresee it anywhere in my near future wanting to stop doing that granted it's a lot of work it sucks sometimes sometimes, sometimes. yeah no i shouldn't say it sucks i should say it's like it's stressful it's a, lot of work. it's a lot of work and it's stressful but like at the end of the day what job is it you gotta choose and your hard yeah you gotta choose your hard you gotta choose your challenges and like there's so much potential in just what we're doing and i'm like so confident in us honestly i'm like so confident that we're gonna be um some of the most successful people that we know. Yeah. Wow. But damn, I don't think any of us can articulate anything better than that. No. Like that, was yeah. in, that was incredible. That was awesome. Thanks. That was awesome. Thanks. What a great hot seat. That was yeah. fun. Thanks, Ben. That was amazing. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> we got a meeting in 15 minutes, oh, shoot, speaking of, of expanding the, the crew, so as far as workers go. So Shit, well, boys. Thanks, thanks for, for letting listening. me uh, Thanks for letting me chat about yeah, my, you myself for a while. Absolutely. You Love you, bro. Love you, boy. Love you. Love you too, boys. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. All right, see, see ya. ya. Peace.